Hey, I was reading The Guardian today. Turns out they're not kidding around about this climate change. <laughs> Turns out those scientists, they're not making up stuff. Planet at its hottest in 115,000 years, thanks to climate change. So, yeah, that's from The Guardian. It says the global temperature has increased to a level not seen for 115,000 years. Requiring daunting technological advances that will cost the coming generations hundreds of trillions of dollars. According to the scientist widely credited with bringing climate change to the public's attention. So there's a guy named James Hansen. He, he is credited. He's, uh, he's a former NASA scientist. And he's credited with... Uh, with bringing climate change to the public's attention. And now he wrote a paper that's uh, sounding the alarm. Uh, It's a new paper submitted by James Hansen, former NASA scientist, and 11 other experts. And the paper states that the 2016 temperature is likely to be 1.25 Celsius degrees above pre-industrial times. Following a warming trend, where the world has heated up at a rate of 0.18 Celsius degrees per decade over the past 45 years. So from his paper, this rate of warming is bringing Earth in line with temperatures last seen in the Emean period. I don't even know there was an Emean period. Did you, Hank? I, I knew about the Cambrian and the Paramecium's. I, that's all I got. I know about the Iron Age. <laughs> I didn't know about the Emi, Emian. Paramecium's are a bug, by Trump the way. Trump no, Yes. I just want to be par- clear. Trump knows about the uh, Kellyan periods, mm-hmm. Megan Kellyan periods, yeah, but he right. doesn't know about the e- Emian. It's uh, an, an inter- that was an interglacial era ending 115,000 years ago when there was much less ice and the sea level was 6 to 9 meters or 20 to 30 feet higher than today. So the sea was 30 feet higher. 30 feet higher. So with the temp- the last time the temperatures of the earth were this hot, the seas were 30 feet higher. So that means no Manhattan, no Florida. And I'm safe here in Pasadena because there's yeah. a couple mountain ranges in between me and the ocean. We might have beachfront property, but we'll be doing it'll be, all right. Yeah, and I'm going to buy property that's 31 feet yeah. ab- above sea level. You buy. There you go. <laughs> that's buy, a smart investment. There you go. That's thinking, <laughs> huh? Yeah. That's how. That's the Trumpian. See? That guy's went to Trump you. Genius. Genius. That's right. Uh it's terrifying, actually. This whole, I mean, this like is terrifying. One or two feet is terrifying. Thirty feet is uh, so, national. I mean, most of the population lives near the ocean, lives most near of water. The, most of the Earth's population so, lives near water. Yeah, I don't have kids. I'm not really worried about this. Yeah, and I hate my nephews, so I don't worry about it either. I think, I, I mean, climate change will bring war. Oh yeah, lots of wars. But I'm pretty sure I can. And still, being in America, I, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to insulate myself for the next 35 years till I'm dead. 40 right. years, maybe. I'll probably live maybe 40, 45 more years. I think I'll be able to insulate myself. Yeah, uh, you and I will be okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're we'll still. Exp- you, we're old enough to have experienced snowy winters. We'll be able to write books and yes. you know, tell our grandchildren's story. You know, I assume you and I will eventually adopt grandchildren as, eventually. Part, as part of the YouTube channel. And uh, But like it, this stuff is going away, and it's the displacement. I mean, you know, you have all these millions of people, the most, uh, it, most affected by this will need to go somewhere. And desperation breeds crime and poverty you know i mean and all of that war. leads war i mean it leads to conflict it leads to food shortages it leads to not to mention water the, shortage water's the new oil yeah yeah and and there's these tipping points that exist that that, that kind of occur throughout our history based on changes in the way the uh, various carbon systems work together that's how that's why we have some periods of stability which is what we're in right now if we weren't messing with it or we have periods where there's kind of like quick change and things changing around kind of rapidly. And by rapidly, geologically rapid is like, you know, a few thousand or more years. Not, right. You know, that's why it's frustrating. People are like, well, the earth always changes. Oh, it gets warmer. Not like that this no, fast. No, no, no. It yeah. never heated up this quickly. The last time it heated up this quickly was when an asteroid hit the planet. <laughs> and that was when it all heated up in about, you know, four or five hours. But so when an asteroid hits the planet, it makes it hot and then cold because well, doesn't yeah. it create in like a winter because of now, the dust? Yeah, it, it does that too. Yeah, but yeah. the initial impact, if it's strong enough, can cause a fireball that consumes the planet. I don't know if it reaches the exact other side of the planet, but it it 
completely devastates everything. Really? Around. Yeah. I, like I, a nuclear I, explosion, kind of, huh? Well, according to my friend, the Discovery Channel with Neil deGrasse. T I don't know. I'm just making stuff up, but I'm not. But yeah, I mean, it can be. Uh, it can set off fires. It can trigger volcanoes. It can trigger earthquakes because so, it's it's completely messing with the whole planet. Yes. I mean, it can shock the entire mantle. Right. But uh, yeah, then the, there's a dust thing in the air that can disrupt weather patterns, and that causes less sunlight to reach, and so that can cause nuclear. Well, isn't yeah, that dust they, winter, Isn't that what they thought killed the dinosaurs? Was yeah. that cloud made everything cold? Yeah, the nuclear, uh, not nuclear. Sorry, the Yucatan Peninsula is where it impacted 65 million years ago. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. See, I know stuff. And Hank does a science podcast, so that, he, he's, he's being very helpful today. I do. Infinite Clicks. Infinite Clicks. It's Check called. it out. Listen, so according to this this guy from NASA, he says, in order to meet the target set at last year's Paris Climate Accord to avoid runaway climate change, massive CO2 extraction costing an eye-watering $104 trillion to $570 trillion will be required over the coming century with large risks and uncertain feasibility as to its success, the paper states. So that's what, so that's, this is the problem. We're having a, potentially a $570 trillion we're going to have to spend to try to, you know, make the planet not go away. He goes on to say there's a misconception that we've begun to address the climate problem, said Hansen. So that's this guy. This is the guy who, again, uh, he brought climate change into the public arena through his testimony to the U.S. Congress in the 80s. And he says, even with optimistic assumptions, future emissions reductions, it will cost hundreds of trillions of dollars. It's potentially putting young people in charge of a situation that is beyond their control. It's not clear that they will be able to take such measures, such actions. Wow, this guy's not messing around. This guy's really saying, hey, this it's really a tap. It's here. And uh, the paper uh, submitted as a discussion paper to Earth System Dynamics Journal is a departure from the usual scientific process, Hank as it has yet to be peer-reviewed and has been launched to support a legal case waged by a group of young people against the U.S. government. Yeah, did you know about this? So there's 21, last year, 21 youths aged between 8 and 19 filed a constitutional lawsuit against the Obama administration for failing to do enough to slow climate change. Hansen and his granddaughters are parties to this legal challenge, which was filed in Oregon and asserts that the government has violated young people's rights to life, liberty and property. The court needs to step in to force governments to act on climate change because they are largely free of the corrupting influence of special interests, Hansen says. Oh, OK. The science is crystal clear. We have to phase out emissions over the next few deca decades, and that won't happen without substantial actions by Congress and the executive branch, and that's not happening. So we need the courts to apply pressure, as they did with civil rights. Some sort of future. Yeah. So there you go. And he says that in order to do that, that they're going to need some kind of futuristic technology that sucks CO2 directly from the atmosphere. Uh, the environment at of this time where sea levels were around 65 feet higher than they are today, meaning the last time it was this hot, 115,000 years ago. Sea levels were around 65 feet higher than today, and trees were able to grow near the North Pole due to a lack of ice. Wow. Think about that. It's um, the whole uh, idea that we'll come up with something to, um, you know, scrub the atmosphere of CO2 is not the worst. I mean, it's it may be possible. Humans are very ingenious people creatures somehow despite all the bs a few of us get it together enough that someone invented electricity and you know what i mean like we can figure out some pretty cool stuff but counting on that is so that's is what a crime he's saying it's a crime on, pre, on on subsequent generations because it might someone and, and there will be an economic incentive for it and and actually that's kind of the, the thing that drives most uh, most behavior uh, uh, big groups of behavior is economic incentive and and fear and you know food yes. and stuff like that but um, it may, hopefully somebody comes up with something. It might happen. And it's, it's sad to say though, because we could have prevented it. Yes. It could have been, it could have been stopped, but the United States po political, political system, you know, Reagan immediately going off with his, uh, 
you know, taking the um, solar panels off the White House, just the, 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 these kinds of idiotic, the poison of ignorance from the past because of dumbasses like Reagan and the other people that have, you know, fo- you know followed in his uh, terrible footsteps have driven all of us over this cliff. And like I was saying earlier, you and I are fine. You know what I mean? We're going to die old men, hopefully, uh, well, you know, hopefully someday, and then the world will be super hot then, but at least we will have seen pretty much a stable environment. But it, it it's not, it's those days are over. So it says, you know, it, that the recent studies have cast doubt over whether the world will stay, uh, will stay with its target set in the Paris climate talks. So they have a target of a 1.5 Celsius limit on the average global temperature rise. This guardrail and even the two Celsius degree limit agreed by 195 nation appears dependent on as yet undeveloped technology that would remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. So in order to reach the targets that they set in Paris, we're going to have to develop some technology that actually takes CO2s out of the atmosphere, which we haven't developed yet. And he says, under this scenario, huge emissions cuts would be sub- supplemented by a widespread conversion to biofuels that would be burned for energy. The emission from this energy would then be buried underground, where he says some some sort of futuristic technology that sucks CO2 directly from the atmosphere may be required. But he says that this is a dubious proposition because it requires a vast change in land use at a time where a growing global population will require more food. And he also says that there are major doubts whether technology to capture CO2 and lock it underground, often touted as the panacea by the fossil fuel industry, will be developed in time to help avoid the dangerous sea level rise, drought, heat waves, and diseases spurred by warming temperatures. Last week, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said that carbon dioxide levels will not drop below the symbolic 400 parts per million mark in our lifetimes, the highest concentration of CO2 since the Pliocene era three million years ago. And it was at that time, it was at that time, the Pliocene era three million years ago, where the sea levels were 65 feet higher and there were, there were trees on the North Pole. Wow. Hey, the system worked, though. I mean, they didn't want to, uh, they don't really deny climate science. They wanted the confusion about the argument. Yes. That's where the, that's the mechanism for them to continue the short-term business model of uh, increasing quarterly profits every quarter and, or, you know, that whole thing. So, yeah. So Exxon Mobil gets, and and BP gets to make a couple uh, trillion dollars over the last 20, 30 years. And, uh... The rest of the world has to pay the price for it. We have a huge energy source. Look up. That's what. That's where all the energy from the earth comes from, from that. Yeah. Any energy that's being used, the energy to move my mouth, to work this camera, to work, comes from the sun. Everything that's happening here comes from the sun. That's where the energy comes from. It doesn't come from anywhere else. That's true. I mean, wind is solar energy. Wind uh, is solar energy also. Coal, coal is carbon that was, it's very old forests that have been compacted. Right. But that's all. That's because, the energy from the sun, goes yeah. photosynthesis, creates a tree, the tree dies, turns into, boom, that's from the sun. Yeah. Uh, it's, but, it's, dinosaurs, it's, right? They eat plant. Plants get sun. They create the photosynthesis. They turn it into energy. A dinosaur eats the plants. They die. We burn the freaking dinosaur. Right. It's the energy. It's just energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change forms. True. There are geothermal sources of energy that are not related to the sun, but that's not the way our ecosystem has evolved. That's not the way there's, our ecosystem there's, there's has evolved. pockets. Evolved. There are pockets. Yeah. But I... <laughs> okay. We could, we could do done that. <laughs> anyway, it turns out we're, we're, we're effed. And it's worse than you think. And of course it is. And of course we have a we have a president. Our next president, Hillary Clinton, is uh, going so all hundred percent towards fracking. So she accepts the science on climate change, just not the climate change science about fracking, because she's in the pockets of the fossil fuel industry. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 